should turn off the TV. That might have. There's a Star Wars marathon on. But I will get back to that after I'm done recording. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. This is episode number 40. Uh, today is Monday, October the 9th. So today is Thanksgiving um, for us folks here in Canada, which is where I am recording from. I'm recording from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, which is where I live with my partner Aaron. And normally someone who is in the background of my podcast, but who isn't here right now, um, our adorable Quaker parakeet Yoshi, uh, who is the pin feathers to my pearls and who is off screen just over there. Um, Yoshi, can you say hi? He is just looking over here. So, uh, yes, today is Thanksgiving for us Canadians. So if you are Canadian, um, by the time you're watching this, the day will be passed. But I hope that you have and had a very lovely Thanksgiving. I had my Thanksgiving dinner on Saturday with my family and it was amazing because my mom makes such a good turkey. Um, Oh my god, I'm a minute into this and I already feel like I have no direction whatsoever. <laughs> also, when I was getting ready to record this, I thought it was a good idea to wear these glasses and now I'm looking at myself and I'm just like, why did I put these glasses on? So I'm gonna go change my glasses, which I'm sure you all needed to know. Okay, that's better. <laughs> at least to me it is. I'm sure to all of you, you're just like, I, I didn't care. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Okay, as I was saying before I got distracted, this is the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. Uh, a generally nitty uh, and yarny goodness podcast uh, hosted by me, Candice. If you want to find me on the interwebs, you can find me as transitory on both Ravelry and Instagram. Um, Instagram being the social media platform where I am the most active. Uh, there's also a Ravelry group for this podcast, which you can find just by, there should be a link in the doobly-doo, and um, if you just go onto Ravelry and search for Pin Feathers and Pearls in the groups tab, it should come right up for you. And yeah, if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for tuning in, if you've made it this far. Um, thank you for giving my little podcast a shot, I hope you find something you enjoy. Uh, and if you're a returning viewer, then thank you so much for returning and continuing to spend a little bit of your time with me. Um, I'm thankful to each and every one of you who decides that they want to spend a little part of their day with me and my uh, wackadoo podcast. <laughs> so yeah, today is going to be a bit of a different episode for y'all. Uh, it has been exactly one week since I came back from Vancouver, where I was last weekend for Knit City. Uh, it was my first time ever going to Knit City, and I went with two really close friends of mine, uh, who are Kemper, who is the host of the Junk Yarn podcast, and the dyer behind Junk Yarn Yarns, and Lara, who I've talked about many a time on this podcast, she's a really close friend of mine as well. She's the host of the Fawn Knits and the Dyer behind the Fawn in the Fox uh, yarns, um, as well as an amazing bag maker. Uh, so yeah, we were at Knit City last weekend and it was a ton of fun. Um, so this episode is going to be a bit of a haul video more than anything else. I am not going to show any works in progresses, progresses, progress. I'm not going to show any whips basically this episode, um, just to keep things uh, a little bit shorter. Uh, I will be talking about 1FO, which is the elephant in the room. You may have noticed that I'm wearing it, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, it's mostly going to be a haul video. So yeah. If you're not into that, then um, maybe tune in next time. Maybe watch uh, a previous episode. I don't know. Um, yes. But before we get on to that, I just wanted to talk about a knit along that I am hosting right now. So this knit along started on October the 1st um, and it is the mint along. Should be showing up on your screen right now. Um, so it's the mint along. So basically you can knit, crochet, whatever you want to make, uh, as long as it is in the color 
mint, which is my favorite color. Um, it just has to be mint. It has to include mint. It doesn't even have to be it. Like it could just be one stripe on a self-striping sock that happens to be mint. As long as you don't have to like squint to see the mint or, um, yeah, it just has to have some mint in it. So that is the knit along. It started October the 1st and it is going until the end of, uh, November, I believe November the 30th, is it 30? or 31st the end of November um, so yeah that's going on right now there is a chatter thread in my Ravelry group so hop on over cast on your minty projects if you so wish uh, and all the rules are in the chatter thread um, it's pretty simple has to have some mint in it uh, I did say no whips um, for this knit along just because it's a two-month knit along and yeah I hope you guys join in because as y'all know, I do love me some mint, so I love seeing all the minty yarns and projects uh, happening in the chatter thread right now. Um, they make me very happy. <laughs> so moving on, let us talk about the FO that I wanted to talk about. Um, and that is my May pullover, which I am wearing right now. So the May sweater um, is a pattern by Andrea Mallory. It is a simple uh, little t-shirt pattern, oversized t-shirt pattern uh, that you knit from the bottom up and it uses worsted weight yarn. I used about four skeins, under four skeins actually, of Malabrigo Rios in the pearl colorway uh, and it's knit in this really cool like, um, I think it's called Broken Stockinette. So it's basically... Um, every other row the stitches are twisted which creates this really cool texture effect um, and I really really love how this pattern uh, knit up I was super excited about the knitting it I wanted to knit it ever since she released the pattern so um, when I knew I was going to knit city I knew I wanted to wear it so that it could be or knit it so it could be like my knit city sweater um, so I'm really happy that I was able to finish it in time to wear it in Knit City. Uh, I wore it on the Saturday um, to Knit City. So yeah, it turned out really well. Um, I did do a, I think I talked about this on previous episodes, but I did do a tubular cast on for the uh, hem of it. I don't love how it turned out there, but um, it looks pretty good after it's been blocked. Um, I did do a tubular bind off for the sleeves and the neckline, which I actually really love how the tubular bind off turned out more than I like the uh, tubular cast on. And the back has this really, it basically mimics the front and it's uh, like a lower back. So yeah, you can you see my little owl tattoo back there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love how this this pattern turned out. Uh, I would definitely knit it again. Um, it's a pattern that has a lot of positive ease. So when I was swatching for it, I decided to go down. Um, what needle size did I use? Ah, I forget what needle size I used. But I definitely went down a couple of needle sizes from the pattern because I felt like if I used the needle size specified in the pattern, um, the fabric was just going to be a little bit too loose. And I'm really glad that I did go down those needle sizes because I mean the fabric is already like you can kind of tell there's like there's a looseness to it um so I'm really really glad that I went down a needle size I probably could have even knit like one size up but then I'm scared that these would like slip down like the shoulders would slip down a lot so yeah I really love how it turned out um it was such a fast easy knit like it just zoomed so uh yeah if if you've been considering knitting uh, a May, I definitely recommend it. I really enjoy it. It's super wearable um, and comfy. Uh, and the thing that I just love, I love a low back. Um, so I love that about this sweater. Uh, so yeah, I really love how it turned out and um, not much else I can say about that. Uh, it was a really fun knit and I'm happy that I was able to wear a knitted sweater to a uh, 
knitting festival. That was really cool. <laughs> All right, so let us move on to Knit City stuff. Uh, mostly the haul. I'll talk a little bit about Knit City first. Um, so as I have mentioned, this is the first time that I've actually like gone to a bigger knitting festival. I've been to some of the shows that happen here in Calgary, like the Fiber Shindig and the Calgary Fiber Arts Fair, but I've never actually traveled somewhere else specifically for a knitting show, uh, especially one as big as Knit City, which I'm sure people who have gone to Rhinebeck and some of the other shows in the States will, will probably be like, but Knit City isn't that big, but to me it was big. Um, and it was just such a fun experience. Um, I met so many amazing, amazing knitters, people that I know on Instagram, people who watch the podcast, who came up and said hi. Um, it was just such a, a humbling and amazing and just incredible experience to be able to talk to people and put a face to the name of so many people who I've um, interacted with online. Uh, and it just, it meant so much to me. Anytime someone came up to me and told me that they watched the podcast, I just felt like it was just a really nice feeling to, to meet all of you. So thank you so much for if you came up and said hi, um, if we had any conversations, I just, it meant a lot to me to be able to connect with you, um, face to face because... Uh, it just, it was a little bit surreal. I mean, I know that people watch the podcast, um, but to actually talk to people who, who watched is, was amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> some time with two really close friends of mine who I'm not going to go on and on about because that would be kind of obnoxious but Kemper and Lara are um, they're just incredible women and I'm so lucky and honored to be able to call them two of my closest friends uh, and it was just an amazing time so yeah with all that being said <laughs> uh, let's go on to the haul because I'm not good with mushy stuff but they know how I feel <laughs> um, and all of you know how I feel I, I'm just incredibly thankful to everyone who I spoke to um, last weekend but now I feel like I'm just repeating myself so let us go on to the hall which is stacked next to me and a little bit intimidating so let's start talking about that shall we so where should I start um, I think I will start with the patterns that I got because I did pick up a fair amount of patterns at uh, the show. <laughs> so one of the first things that we did was we stopped by Sylvia McFadden's booth and um, she is soft sweater and she was releasing a new book uh, last weekend. Um, she re like pre-released it during Knit City weekend before she actually released it. Uh, to the general public, I guess you could say. Um, and that was this book, which is Gentle Armor, which is five shawls for sensitive people, which I just, I just adore. I love the entire aesthetic and the entire um, theme of this collection. Everything in it is incredibly gorgeous. Um, and I think it's just amazing. So... Um, I've already picked out the first shawl that I'm going to be knitting from this collection and that is the With Ease shawl pattern. Uh, and I might have already bought yarn for that too, which I will get into when I actually show yarn. Um, but I also got Sylvia to uh, sign and she said, Shawl Joy Knit Love, love Sylvia, which was really sweet. So. This is Gentle Armor, um, and every pattern in this book is just gorgeous, so highly recommend that. And while I was in her booth, I also picked up a paper copy of Salt, which is another shawl pattern. 
Um, I want to show you the chart. So, um, so it just is like that. And there's just a simple texture triangle pattern on it. And I've loved this pattern for a while, um, but when I saw a print copy of it, I figured, uh, why not purchase it? So, this is actually probably my first time that I've purchased like paper patterns like this, and there's something really nice about like holding a physical copy of a printed pattern. Um, yeah, I just love that I'll be able to put these on my shelf, and they'll look super pretty there, and everything is just gorgeous about them, so... Yes, picked up these two. Uh, I also stopped by um, the Very Shannon and Jane Richmond booth. Um, I was too shy to say anything to them. <laughs> um, but I tried on the sample for Veronica and I, going to, before going to Knit City, I knew that I wanted to get yarn um, for this sweater. But I actually tried on the sample. I think I, this is the one I actually tried on. And I just, I fell in love with it, guys. Like, it is one of the most wearable, cozy sweaters that I've ever had on my body. So trying it on just cemented to me that I really wanted to knit it. So I, I purchased the paper pattern. And I also, I purchased yarn for this one too, which I will show you when I get into the yarn <laughs> but um yeah i'm super excited to uh to knit this up because i just man trying on that was just uh like it's just an amazing sweater so apparently yoshi agrees can't see him but you can definitely hear him and then the last uh pattern book that I picked up was a bit of an impulse buy. Uh, I bought this, so the other ones that I just showed you I bought on Saturday. Uh, this pattern book I picked up on Sunday because because of one sweater that I fell in love with that's in it. So I picked up the Strong and Free collection which is a pattern collection by Heidi K K you know what I'm not even gonna pronounce that right so it's by Heidi and Jose pa Paquin? Paquin? Man. I know I'm not saying those names right. But it is uh, a collection by these two designers and it is full of just glorious patterns. But the pattern that I fell in love with and the reason why I bought this book really is the Hamilton Pullover. And I bought yarn for this pattern as well. So... Um, I'm really happy to say that all the yarn that I bought, I bought with a pattern in mind for. Um, so yeah, once I get started talking about my yarn, um, you'll see. But I wanted to knit this sweater, which is the Hamilton Pullover. I didn't try on the sample, but they had the sample on display uh, in their booth. And it was just gorgeous. Like I kept going back to it and just marveling at how gorgeous that sweater is so i picked up this book uh mostly for that sweater but um there's a ton of gorgeous patterns in this book um this sweater is also really gorgeous just really simple easy to wear um sweaters that i love which are totally my style this cardigan is also super Pretty. So yeah, I'm really happy that I picked this book up because I could see myself knitting uh, more than one pattern from it. And those were the patterns that I picked up. Now on to the yarn. As I mentioned, I did a bunch of damage. <laughs> um, when I was planning, like when I was planning out what I wanted to buy for Knit City, I knew that I did not want to buy any single skeins of sock yarn, which I'm happy to say I did not purchase any single skeins of sock yarn. Thank goodness, because my stash of single skeins of fingering weight yarn is uh, a little bit out of control. So that is one thing that I did not need. But I did know that I wanted to at least buy one sweater's quantity of yarn. And then I bought. 
So, um, I have lots of sweaters quantities of yarn now, um, but that's okay. Uh, so, let's get started. Uh, one of the first booths that we went to on uh, Saturday was the Sweet Fiber booth. And out of all the booths that we visited, I gotta say, the Sweet Fiber booth was probably the most intense. It was very crowded. Everything was just gorgeous, so I don't blame it for being crowded. Um, it was very crowded, and there was just so much gorgeous yarn. Uh, but I definitely knew that I wanted to get some sweet fiber. And I did. <laughs> um, it's funny because the morning before we left, I was on Instagram and I saw a picture of this colorway and I was like, oh, I bet I'm going to buy that. And I, I ended up buying it. So I bought six skeins of silver leaf in the Twist DK base. So this is, like, first of all, let's talk about this colorway, which is getting really blown out. I'm sorry. But um, it's totally my color for one. That minty, silvery gray. Oh, skein overboard. This minty, silvery gray color is just gorgeous. So I bought these six skeins with a pattern in mind, and that pattern is the Divide pattern. I forget who the designer of that pattern is, but it was either in, it was, it's not in this past Brooklyn Tweed uh, collection, but I think it was in the collection before that. Um, it's this really beautiful pullover with uh, this twisted rib sort of detail all over it. Um, and I've wanted to knit it since I saw that pattern. Um, and I think it'll look really beautiful in this colorway. So yeah. That is, I'm like, where do I put it now? Um, that is, like I said, Sweet Fiber uh, in the Merino Twist DK base, which is 100% Super Wash Merino, 260 yards, uh, and it's in the Silver Leaf colorway, which is glorious. So that was the first sweater quantity I bought. And then, as I mentioned, I tried on the sample for Veronica, and that just totally made me go, I need to buy the yarn for that. And um, I decided that I wanted to knit it in Shelter. So, I forget the booth. I think it's called... Let me check. The booth for Beehive Wool Shop, who is one of the few Canadian retailers who actually sell Shelter, uh, they had a bunch of shelter on display and so I went to go take a look to see if perhaps they had a sweater quantity of Shelter in a colorway that I would want um, And they did so I ended up buying 10 skeins of shelter uh, In the truffle hunt colorway, which is this beautiful Tweety Brown I think it'll look the Veronica will look really pretty in this Like it's almost the same, it's a bit darker, but it's almost the same color as the pattern sample. So I got 10 skeins of that. I don't know why I feel like I have to hold all of them. It's like, look, it's proof, I have 10. <laughs> but yeah. So I got 10 skeins of Shelter to knit Veronica with. And I am super happy about it. Like, it has these flecks of, like, a blue tweed, which you probably won't even be able to see on camera. But it's just gorgeous. And I think it's going to knit up super nice. And I'm really, really tempted to cast this on. Um, but I'm resisting casting any of this stuff on until I finish a few of my works in progress. Which I'm not talking about this episode, but you'll see. And then I mentioned that I picked up Shawl Joy and that I bought the yarn to knit the With Ease pattern. So all the shawls in Shawl Joy, Shawl Joy, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Gentle Armor, not Shawl Joy. Shawl Joy is the book that Sylvia released last year, I believe. So I mentioned that <laughs> I wanted to knit one of the shawls from Gentle Armor. 
And all the shawls in Gentle Armor are knit with uh, Hinterland yarns. And Hinterland Yarns actually had a booth at Knit City. How convenient. Um, and when I went to the booth and I felt the yarn, it was like love at first touch. It was gorgeous. So I picked up three skeins of Hinterland Range, which is a glorious 50% Canadian Rambouillet, 50% uh, alpaca blend of yarn in the honey colorway. And this is going to become, um, probably with ease, from the Gentle Armor Shawl Collection. So, again, something else that I'm super tempted to cast on with, but I'm holding off. So that was all yarn that I had bought on uh, the Saturday. And then on Sunday we went back because Lara had a... Uh, meet and greet at the Wet Coast Wools booth because they were carrying her yarn, which was so exciting. Um, I was super excited for Laura because uh, for that. Um, and I didn't think that I was going to buy anything since I had bought a lot the day before, but um, I bought that pattern book with the Hamilton pullover in it, and then I was like, I really want to knit that sweater. So I started looking around for yarn that I could use to knit that sweater with. Um, used to knit that sweater with. Used to knit that sweater. Words are failing me today, guys. It's the end of a long weekend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we went back on Sunday and I was in the Sweet Georgia booth. And first of all, can I just say that Felicia Lowe herself, um, she, she was in the booth and she was like, I know you and she actually watches this podcast and I don't know I was completely taken aback by that I can't believe that someone like Felicia would be watching this uh, dorky podcast of mine <laughs> so I was completely taken off guard and I felt like I was gonna cry and then she did like a mini interview thing with me and I just I feel like I might have made a complete fool of myself so if you're watching this Felicia I'm sorry if I was super awkward and weird but um, it was incredible to meet you but yeah all that to say I was in the sweet Georgia booth and I uh, picked up more yarn to knit sweaters with so I picked up five skeins of sweet Georgia superwash worsted in the slate colorway which is a super dark gray which is not showing up accurately on screen at all. It looks kind of blue on screen, but it's not really. So I picked up five skeins of this to knit the Hamilton pullover out of. And I didn't mention, but another plus to the Hamilton pullover is that it's called Hamilton. I mean, come on. Of course I was going to like it. <laughs> so yeah, I also picked up five skeins of this. So... It's just gorgeous. Um, and yeah, that, that three sweater quantities of yarn. Uh, but I'm really happy with all my purchases. A little bit shocked by it all and packing it was, was quite interesting. My bag was, my suitcase was basically all yarn. It's kind of hilarious. But yeah, that was my haul, and not only did I pick up all of that, um, my glorious, gorgeous friends gave me gifts, so I will show you those as well. Which they didn't really, they, seriously, they didn't have to give me gifts because just spending the weekend with them was enough, but I just, I'm so thankful to them um, for these. So. First thing is something that Kemper and Lara bought for me, um, I think as an early birthday gift, because this is something that I really, really wanted, but because I knew I was going to Knit City, I never, I, I didn't order it online when I could. Uh, and that is a project bag um, by Home Row Fiber Co. And I have been in love with this project bag ever since I saw it. Um, on Lara's podcast, actually, ever since I saw that she had bought it. It's this gorgeous print. It's called, um, I think it's Wielder of Needles. It's this gorgeous print. And there's all these, like, little 
feathers and moons and things on the side too. Uh, and this beautiful yellow and this beautiful pink interior. But yeah, I am in love with this bag and I couldn't believe that they had bought it for me. I, yeah. So thank you so much Kemper and Lara for this gift. It was incredible to receive. I'm so excited to use it. I think I'm going to, when I cast on my With Ease shawl, it is definitely going to be held in this bag. I love it so much. Um, and then, not only that bag, but Laura made me one of her tree print bags with a mint zipper, of course. Um, and the interior is also mint because, of course, it is. And Kemper gave me one of her junk yarn pins, which coordinates super well with this bag, don't you think? So, thank you so much, Laura. And thank you so much, Kemper, for this pin, because it's so cute. And it's mint. And they also gave me yarn. So, Laura dyed up this special colorway just for... Kemper, myself, and I think she dyed one up for her. I hope she dyed one up for herself, too. Um, it's called Knit City 2017, and it's on her dough base, which is her MCN uh, 801010. And, like, seriously, this made me want to cry when I saw it, so. Uh, thank you so much, Laura. Like, I don't even want to use it. I have so much of... <laughs> Laura's yard and to me it's just so special and this one is especially special just because of the fact that it is a special colorway to commemorate our trip and she also gave me and I, she didn't have to do this but I offhandedly told her um, I don't even remember when that I loved the mountain range colorway of hers on this tweed base that she has which is her Ren base, and she gifted me a skein of that as well, which is just gorgeous. Like, I feel like this colorway goes so well with those colored nefs. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it so much. So thank you so much, Laura. And Kemper also gave me yarn. So she gave me this colorway which is her Wendy colorway I think this was part of one of her soft yarn clubs I could be wrong Kemper I'm sorry if I have that wrong um, but this is the Wendy colorway which is glorious it is this super vibrant yellow um, and all these other like blue and green speckles all over it it's gorgeous and this is on our boss sock two ply uh, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon base. And I'm sorry that all these colorways are being super blown out. But trust me, they're gorgeous. And she also gifted me this other colorway, and it doesn't have a label, but um, it's gorgeous. Like, I can't even... Like, I can't even with this. Like, look at this. Look at those speckles. So, this is also on our boss sock base, so an 80-20 Superwash Moon on Island. Like, look at that. Like, look. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much, Kemper. So, yeah, those, those were my gifts from my lovely friends. And um, that concludes all the haul. <laughs> oh, boy. It feels a little bit like confessing your sins, uh, showing off, like, your Knit City haul. Oh, I have two other things, actually. I got, uh, one of the Knit City tote bags, because when you buy that much yarn, you need a bag to carry it in. So, I got one of the Knit City, uh, tote bags with the sheep on it, who I believe is called Lady Baba? See, this is how much of a Knit City noob I am. And I don't even remember what booth it was in that I bought this little bag from, but I bought this bag because there's buns on it. 
and you know me in buns. Yes. That really does conclude everything, I think, um, from Knit City. But yeah, really, it was such a fun weekend. Um, I didn't mention that on the Friday that we got there, there was actually a Stephen West lecture that night. So we did attend that as well, which was super interesting. Um, it was really interesting to hear about his design process um, and how he talked about how us knitters don't really have a stash. We are just yarn curators, <laughs> which I think that I curate a little bit too much. <laughs> and um, we also went to the Richmond Night Market on Sunday night, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we ate a ton of food. Uh, it was it was actually a really nice uh, night weather-wise, but we were so tired by the end of it. But yeah, all in all, it was a fantastic weekend. Uh, I wish it could have been longer. Um, I have so many glorious sweaters and projects to knit now. I'm, I'm just, yeah. But that being said, I think I'm going to end this episode. Uh, no recommendation on this week or anything like that. Like I said, it's a little bit of a different episode just because I really just wanted to talk about the haul this time around. Because if I didn't talk about the haul um, in a separate video, then my next episode was going to be like really long. And I had, if you follow me on Instagram, you might have known this, but I have been having some computer issues lately. I'm actually kind of scared about what editing this podcast is going to be like because my computer has been kind of on the fritz lately. Uh, it's pretty old. My, I have a MacBook Pro and I think the video card um, might be on its way out. So knock on wood that it lasts for a little while longer because if there's one thing I cannot afford, it is a new computer. So hopefully I can get this episode out. <laughs> so hard I'm just gonna end this episode now so thank you all for spending some time with me join the mint along if you have a minty project that you want to cast on for I would love it if you would join along with me and all the rest of us who are uh, taking part in that knit along and yeah I will see you on the flip side uh, I said flip side and then my hair like flipped out did you see that anyway uh, I love you all. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Bye!